Good afternoon. I'm Professor Judy Lovegrove from the University of Reading and President of the Nutrition Society. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the Nutrition Society's Virtual Award Ceremony 2020. 107 delegates are joining us today from all corners of the world, including Europe, Asia, Africa, the Americas and New Zealand. Welcome to you all and thank you very much for joining us. Today is the first time four Nutrition Society Awards will be presented on the same platform. The long established Silver Medal and the Cuthbertson Award and two new Society Awards will be presented as, at this unique awards ceremony. The unusual circumstances resulting from COVID-19 have impacted upon the Society's ability to deliver its annual cycle of awards, which are normally presented throughout a series of conferences during the course of the year. However, today's awards ceremony is an excellent example of how the Society has adapted to the challenges of this pandemic. The first of the new, new initiatives is the outstanding British Journal of Nutrition Paper of the Year, an award introduced by the Editor-in-Chief of the British Journal of Nutrition and our past Society President, Professor John Mathers, who will be chairing this award. I have the pleasure of chairing the Silver Medal presentation, which recognises scientific excellence in the field of nutrition. Our honorary officer, Professor Sue Lanham Yu, will be chairing the Cuthbertson Award, acknowledging early career stage scientists or clinicians for excellence in clinical nutrition or metabolic research. The final presentation today is the Widdison Award, which is the third of the new senior awards introduced by the Society in 2018. This recognizes excellence in the field of public health nutrition. We are delighted that Professor Paul Traherne has agreed to chair this prestigious award. Paul was the recipient of the first Hopkins Award presented in 2019, which recognizes senior scientists within the area of cellular and molecular nutrition. Paul has also been a long-standing society member, current editor-in-chief of the Journal of Nutrition Sciences and past honorary publications officer. Thank you very much, Paul, for agreeing to chair this inaugural Widdison Award. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the exceptional and very worthy award recipients who will deliver four standalone 35 minute presentations, followed by a 10 minute break. Delegates will be informed by chairs of session or the chat function if there is any temporary problems. You can also contact the society at conference at nutritionsociety.org where four of the society staff and our CEO are currently in the Nutrition Society offices in London, managing the live streaming and supporting the event. This promises to be an excellent afternoon filled with outstanding nutritional science, highlighting the breadth of science areas within our discipline, which I'm very much looking forward to. Finally, in terms of interaction, I would encourage everyone to use Twitter and tweet at NutritionSoc. I'm very pleased to now officially open the award ceremony 2020. We'll pass on to John Mathers for the chairing the first session. Thank you very much. Julie, thank you very much indeed. Uh, so let me add my welcome to the British Journal of Nutrition Paper of the Year Award Lecture. And this inaugural uh, uh, research award goes to Professor Chisato Nagata from the Department of Epidemiology and Preventive Medicine at the Graduate School of Medicine in Gifu University in Japan for her paper entitled Intake of Starch and Sugars and total and cause specific mortality in a Japanese community, um, the Takayama study. Takayama is a city in Gifu prefecture in the heart of the Japanese Alps. And way back in 1992, Professor Nagata and her colleagues set up a prospective cohort study in that city, following more than 30,000 people since that time, 1992. Remarkably, more than 90% of the adults over the age of 35 participated in the study. So it's a really comprehensive study of a single sitting. Professor Nagata and her colleagues continue to work on the invaluable data collected in this study. So without further ado, I'd welcome Professor Nagata and invite her to give her lecture from the British Journal of Nutrition lecture, uh, Paper of the Year. Thank you very much.
Thank you, John. Uh, first, I'm grateful to the members of journal for choosing our paper. Just I have received uh, the certificate today, so it is clearly honor for us. Thank you very much. And now it is uh, night time in Japan, so I will show the uh, certificate to my colleagues. I'm also thankful to several institute, grantees, and participant in the Takayama study for supporting our work. Uh, my colleagues contributed uh, to this award, and I am pleased to talk about our work. Dietary carbohydrates have been implicated in hyperglycemia, weight gain, hyperlipidemia, and hypertension because these factors are risk factors of diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and some cancers. The link between carbohydrate intake and increased risk of chronic disease have been suggesting. Therefore, high intake of carbohydrate may lead to the increased risk of total mortality. Actually, a large prospective study on 80 countries observed that highest quintile of carbohydrate was associated with increased risk of total mortality. The risk increase was 28% and statistically significant. However, risk increase was observed in non-Asian regions, but not Asian regions. Therefore, the relation between carbohydrate intake and mortality may be dependent on the type of carbohydrate. It is recent that a uh, Japanese standard table of food composition included each data for each type of carbohydrate, such as starch, glucose, fructose, galactose, sucrose, maltose, lactose, and trehalose. The data is not complete for some foods, but we could estimate sufficiently the intake of each type of carbohydrate in our study group. This enables us to examine the association between the types of carbohydrate and risk of total mortality in the Takayama study. The Takayama study is an ongoing cohort study conducted in Takayama City. That's, this is a map for Japan. That's Takayama City is in the northern part of Gifu Prefecture. Our university is here in Gifu City. From Gifu City, you can reach to Takayama City by about two hours of a trip by train. Takayama City is a beautiful sight sightseeing spot. And like this, photos. This city is called Little Kyoto. The Takayama study aimed to assess associations between lifestyle, including diet and chronic diseases. The entry was uh, September 1st, 1992. The target population was 37,000 residents who are not hospitalized at that time and were aged 35 or over. 85.3% of the target population participated in the Takayama study. Diet was assessed by a quantitative food frequency questionnaire at baseline. This questionnaire included 169 items of food and dishes. 
This item is for beef and vegetables. Examples are given uh, beef and potato, sukiyaki, situ, etc. We asked the intake frequency during the past one year, ranging from none or almost none to twice or over a day. We also ask the portion size for each item by choosing the photos. This questionnaire included many mixed dishes. These items are further defined into individual food items. For example, this is the menu, uh, beef and vegetables. This menu includes flour, cognac, potato, sugar, oil, soybeans, beef, etc. So this questionnaire finally includes 520 different foods. We classified the type of carbohydrate into starch and total sugars. Total sugars represent monosaccharides and disaccharides. Monosaccharides are glucose, fructose, and galactose. Disaccharides are maltose, sucrose, uh, lactose, and trehalose. I mentioned that Japanese food composition table uh, is not complete for some food concerning the type of carbohydrate. But as average, the intake of starch and total sugars covered 95% of total carbohydrate intake. Total carbohydrate content are known for almost all foods in the Japanese food composition table. Based on the response to the questionnaire, we could estimate total energy, individual nutrients, and each type of carbohydrate. The validity of the food frequency questionnaire was checked by comparing the estimate from the questionnaire with estimate from the 12 one-day diet records over one year. For total energy, the correlation coefficients between the two methods was, were 0.44 in men and 0.53 in women. For starch, the correlations were 0.31 in men and women. For total sugars, correlations were 0.28 in men and 0.6 in women. The Japanese Food composition table does not include the values for free sugars and uh, added sugars. So we defined free sugars according to the definition by the WHO. All sugars in sugar, honey, starch sugar, soft drinks, juices, soy beverages, jams, confectionaries, ice cream, meat and seafood seasoned with sugar, yeast bread, and breakfast cereals are included into free sugars. 100% fruit juice was regarded as free sugars. Intake of naturally occurring sugars was estimated by subtracting the free sugar intake from total sugar intake. This slide shows the mean value for each type of carbohydrate. Starch intake is high, nearly 40% of energy in men and women. Total sugar intake was around 10% of energy. In European countries, total sugar intake has been reported be between 15 to 21% of energy. So we can see that total sugar intake is relatively low in this Japanese population. Free sugar intake is also low, less than 5% of energy. Rice is the main source of starch. 
more than 70% of starch comes from rice in this population. For total sugars, sweetened beverages and vegetables and fruits, excluding juice, were main sources. For free sugars, sweetened beverages, confectionaries, and sugars are main sources. These data for sugars are similar to other populations. The follow-up period for this cohort was between September 1992 to October 2008. We included total mortality as a major end point. Deaths were identified through family registry. Cause of deaths were confirmed by this certificate. We also included cause-specific mortality, such as cancer, cardiovascular disease, and non-cancer, non-cardiovascular disease as endpoints. We calculated hazard ratios for total and cause-specific mortality according to quartile of each intake. We included age, marital status, education, height, BMI, physical activity, alcohol intake, smoking status, histories of diabetes and hypertension, menopausal status, and intakes of total energy, total fat, salt, dietary fiber, and coffee as covariate in the models. This slide shows the result. During about 16 years of follow-up period, a total of 2,901 men died. As compared with the lowest intake, the highest quartile of starch intake was significantly associated with a decreased risk of total mortality. The risk reduction was 29%. And on the other hand, the highest quartile of total sugar intake was significantly positively associated with the risk of total mortality. The risk increase was 27%. Each type of sugar was also positively associated with the risk of total mortality. I show the result for fructose and sucrose as examples. The highest intake of these sugars was associated with about 25% increased risk of total mortality. Both free sugar and naturally occurring sugar intake was significantly positively associated with risk of total mortality. The risk increase was 22% for free sugar and 16% for naturally occurring sugar intake. Let's move to the cause specific mortality. Neither starch or total sugar intake was associated with the risk of cancer mortality in men. Uh, the highest quarter of starch intake was significantly associated with a decreased risk of cardiovascular disease mortality. On the other hand, total sugar intake was associated with increased risk of cardiovascular disease mortality. These results are similar to the result for total mortality. For non-cancer, non-cardiovascular disease mortality, non-cancer, non-cardiovascular disease mortality, the results are similar to those for total mortality. High intake of starch was inversely associated with the risk, and total sugar intake was positively associated with the risk. However, in women, starch intake as well as total sugar intake was not associated with the risk of total mortality. Only free sugar intake was 
significant risk, but modestly increase, associated with the increased risk of total mortality. Now I summarize the results from the Takayama study. In men, high intake of starch was associated with a decreased risk of total mortality except cancer mortality. High intake of total sugars, glucose, fructose, sucrose, and maltose was associated with increased risk of total mortality except cancer mortality. Both free sugars and naturally occurring sugars was positively associated with risk of total mortality, especially for non-cancer, non-cardiovascular disease mortality. In women, only free sugar intake was positively associated with the risk of total mortality, especially for non-cancer, non-cardiovascular disease mortality. Let's see the results from the previous studies. The NIH AARP diet and health study evaluates the association between sugar intake and total mortality in US population. Uh, the highest quintile of total sugars and fructose was associated with modest but uh, statistically increased risk of total mortality added in both men and women. Added sugar intake was associated with uh, increased risk of total mortality in women. These findings are similar to us, our findings. However, the highest quintile of non-cancer, non-cardiovascular disease mortality was rather associated with increased, uh, decreased, I'm um, sorry, increased of sucrose and added sugars. The Singapore Chinese Health Study examined the association between starch and total sugar intake and coronary heart disease mortality. The highest quintile of starch intake was significantly associated with increased risk of coronary heart disease mortality. Total sugar intake was rather inversely associated with risk of coronary heart disease mortality. Although the Chinese population also consume a lot of starch, but their findings are different from our results. Some studies focused on cardiovascular disease incidence. The EPIC Morgan study observed higher starch intake was associated with increased risk of coronary heart disease in men. But the Nazi Health Study and EPICOR study did not observe the association between starch or sugars and the risk of coronary heart disease or stroke. In the Takayama study, we observed inverse association between starch intake and mortality, but previous studies did not. To interpret our result, maybe two questions. What are food sources? What are staple foods? Might be a key fact, might be key factors. In Japan, uh, rice is the main source of starch intake, and rice is a staple, staple foods. So the relation between starch intake and mortality should reflect the relationship between rice intake and mortality. The meta-analysis of rice and mortality observed that highest intake of rice was associated with decreased risk of total mortality in men, but not women. These findings are similar to us. As for the chronic disease risk, 
Lysine like intake was not associated with the risk in men, but higher intake of rice was associated with increased risk of chronic diseases. In this meta-analysis, uh, four out of five component studies are come from Japanese cohort. So these data are for Japanese population where Rice is a staple food and main source of starch intake. The primary role of carbohydrate is to provide energy to cells in the body. Starch intake from rice in Japanese men work as fuel and favor the better survival and the excess of other carbohydrate that uh, sugars in this population might be associated with the increased risk of mortality. After our paper was published, some research group has also evaluated the similar topic and their results are similar to our results. In the cohort of Italian men, the highest quota of starch was associated with significantly associated with decreased risk of total mortality. Higher sugar intake was positively associated with the risk of total mortality, although this risk increase was not statistically significant. In the UK biobank population, Higher starch intake as compared with low intake was significantly associated with decreased risk of total mortality. Lower sugar intake as compared with high intake was significantly associated with a reduced risk of total mortality. The replacement of sugars with starch was associated with risk, with risk, risk deduction. For cardiovascular incidence, low sugar intake as compared with high intake was associated with a decreased risk of total mortality. Although starch intake was not directly associated with the risk of cardiovascular disease, the replacement of sugars with starch was associated with decreased risk. Uh, in these populations, I mean, this Italian and UK populations, it is, I'm sure that rice is seldom consumed, but pasta for Italian and bread for UK populations are main source of starch intake. And these two foods may have favorable effect on total mortality. In the Takayama study, we observed positive association between dietary sugars and mortality. Fructose and sucrose have been implicated in liver lipid accumulation, dyslipidemia, decreased insulin sensitivity, and increased uric acids. These mechanisms may suggest High intake of fructose and sucrose may be associated with increased risk of cardiometabolic diseases that may lead to the increased risk of mortality. However, the result from meta-analysis of total sugars and added sugars with cardiovascular disease is not conclusive. Highest intake of total sugar was significantly associated with increased risk of cardiovascular disease mortality, but there was no association between added sugar intake and cardiovascular disease mortality. Sucrose increase was rather inversely associated with the risk of cardiovascular disease mortality. 
as for cardiovascular disease risk, total sugar in intake was not associated with this risk. This is a final slide for me. Um, the high intake of starch and low intake of sugars may favor longevity of Japanese men. However, these findings are new and there are some limitations in our study. For example, diet was assessed only once at baseline and there are maybe unknown confounders and uh, the effect from residual confounders. So additional studies on the association between types of carbohydrates and mortality are needed. Thank you for your attention. Professor Nagata, thank you very much for your lecture. Uh, thank you. Uh, normally, of course, we would like to present you physically with the award. Um, that has been sent to you in Japan. Has it arrived yet? I have just received it today. Perfect. Thank you so, very much. In congratulations. I, yeah. congratulations. Yes, I'll show this tomorrow to my colleague. It is nighttime, so thank Wonderful. you very much. Thank you very much, and thank you again for your presentation. I now hand back to Julie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for that excellent presentation. Um, now this ends this session uh, of the awards uh, ceremony, and I hope to see you at the next session, which is the silver medal, and you click the uh, link in the program. Thank you very much. <laughs>